This is a short and simple video to show you how I did my own first 50 hour tractor service. I'll list items used, part numbers, socket sizes, and all of that in the description below as well. Pull that lever and pop the hood. There's the oil filter, which we will change with the engine oil, even though it's not required for the first 50 hour service on this tractor. Using a 17 millimeter socket, remove one of the two oil pan drain plugs. Have a bucket or pan ready to catch the oil. Disposable gloves are a good idea and get ready to catch the drain plug or prepare to go fishing. While the one side pees out, go do the same thing to the second drain plug on the other side. Time to remove the oil filter, Lefty Lucy. It's gonna drip on the tractor, have some paper towels ready and consider putting a sheet of plastic under the tractor. I'm using 15W40 oil. Using a finger, I forgot my gloves here, put a bit of oil on the O-ring. Now hand thread the filter back on, hand tighten it down. I'd tell you not to over tighten it, but common sense should tell you nothing should ever be over tightened. Replace both oil pan drain plugs you took out earlier by hand, then tighten them down with the 17 millimeter socket. This is the oil fill location. You'll need a funnel and a short section of tube that makes it even easier. My Bobcat CT2025 can hold 6.3 quarts of oil, but that doesn't mean it will. So I put five or so in and start checking the dipstick. Wipe the dipstick off, then insert and pull it back out to check the level. When full, stop for now. We'll run the engine later to circulate the oil and top it off again if needed. Next up is the hydraulic and hydrostat system filters. I have a 14 millimeter plug in the middle and a 30 millimeter plug in the back. If you have a mid PTO, you may have a third plug. Get a big pan ready or two. I didn't have a 30 millimeter socket, so a crescent wrench worked as the plugs weren't as tight as I feared. My tractor holds six gallons of fluid here, so get enough to catch it all. Back to work. Remove the other plug in the middle with a 14 millimeter socket. Not nearly as much will come out here if you drain to the back first. Clean off and replace both the 30 millimeter and 14 millimeter plugs. We now need to remove the filters. I've heard horror stories on how hard these are to remove. Have an oil filter wrench handy. I started on the right side, which is the hydraulic filter, as I heard this was the tough one to remove. It came right off, not tough at all. Just like with the oil filter earlier, put some of the trans diff fluid on the O-ring, then hand thread on and snug it up. Since this is the right side, it's the gray colored filter that goes here. I'll list all of this with part numbers in the description below. On to the left side, which is by the step. Same process, turns out, this is the one that was insanely tight on my tractor. Doesn't help that they paint over it at the factory. This was tough. Oil wrench required for sure. Even then I had to put gloves on and use the wrench to break it fully loose. What a pain. The left side here is the hydrostat filter. The new one is orange. Same deal. Apply some trans diff fluid to the O-ring, hand thread on, and snug it up. Pop out the dipstick from the back as this is also the fill spout. Once again, I used a tube with my funnel. This part can hold six gallons of the trans diff fluid, but start with five or so and then start checking the dipstick. We'll run things later on and top off as needed. Let's move on to the front of the tractor and replace the front differential oil. There are three drain plugs to remove, all 14 millimeter, one low at each front wheel and one higher up on the right side. I start with the low right wheel, crack the plug loose, put a pan under and then remove the plug. I then remove the upper plug that is between the middle and right side of the tractor, accessed from the right side. I then move on to the left side to drain the remaining amount over there. This is thick stuff, it takes a while. I remove the dipstick fill spout in hopes of speeding things up. My hope is crushed. While we wait, we'll grease things up. I found 16 grease fittings on my tractor, which, fun fact, are called Zerks. Eight on each side of the front loader of the tractor. Multi-purpose lithium-based grease was called for, and while this wasn't required until the 100 hour service, it seemed worthwhile to do now. Once all that front diff lube is out, put all three plugs back in. Now I'll start filling. I used an 80W90 gear oil. My tractor can hold 6.3 quarts, so I start checking for full around 5 quarts or so. Triple check everything, then start the tractor for 30 seconds or so. For now, I just want to circulate the engine oil through the new engine oil filter. I then stop the tractor and check the engine oil level and top off as needed. Next up, I start the tractor again and run it for around 5 minutes. And I use the hydraulics, I drive it around, let it warm up, etc. When done, I check all of the fluids again. Check your coolant level now too. Mine was a tiny bit low. The final check is to make sure the brake pedal has enough free play in it. Brakes? Who uses the brakes? I'm sure they're fine. But you want between 0.8 inches and 1.2 inches of travel before the pedal engages. You can adjust the linkage right below the brake pedal if needed. I also use an air compressor to blow dust off the engine air filter. Next up is checking all of the wheel nut torques. If you have a torque wrench, the manual says we want between 144 and 166 foot-pounds for the rears and 57 to 67 foot-pounds for the front. Torque them and use a white paint marker or some sort of paint and brush, whatever, and make a line that you'll know if they loosen over time. Well, that was actually really easy to do. It took around two hours or so, moving pretty slow as I learned where and what things were. But if I did it again, I could probably cut that time almost in half. 
I'm sure I've saved several hundred dollars over having the dealer do it, plus a couple hundred dollars in round trip delivery fees. And I learned a lot about the tractor in the process and have a better understanding of how things work and what to keep an eye on as I use it. I hope this helps you out in some way, or at least one of the eight of you out there. This is the part where I ask you to like and subscribe. Do it if you want, skip it if you don't, but uh, it really does help us.